What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to add lights along a string inside of SketchUp. And we're gonna do this using an extension called path copy. If you're interested in more information on SketchUp extensions, make sure to check out my free SketchUp exten extensions guide at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, this concept um, and where I got the idea originally came from a presentation Daniel Tall did back in, I think it was 2014 at Basecamp, where he talked about adding lights along a string. I've been using this for that application ever since, but I did want to make sure to give credit for the original idea um, to that. I will try to link to that video in the notes down below as well. All right, so this is my deck model that I created a while ago. And um, just a disclaimer, because a lot of you told me, yes, I understand that the framing on this deck may not be 100% right, um, but we are gonna use it for this example, and uh, it should work fine for an example on how to hang string lights. What I'm gonna do in this case is we're gonna use the extension path copy in order to um, create a copy along a path of a few different light fixtures. And so to start off, what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna have these light fixtures hang off of some kind of fixed point on the wall here. And I'm probably gonna add some kind of framing going up just to give these something to hang off of. So really quick, all I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna worry about centering this or anything like that. We're just gonna kind of put it on the edge, but I'm gonna draw a four inch by four inch rectangle on top of this shape. And actually I may kind of center it just using the midpoint on each side here. So I'm just gonna center it on top of this and on top of this. So we have our rectangle right here and I'm just gonna push pull this up probably another, we'll say probably like five feet or something like that, just to kind of get it clear of our deck so that we can draw between two points in order to hang our lights off of. Then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna triple click on it and I'm gonna make it a component. And we're just gonna call this light support. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna draw my hanging point um, from wherever the lights would start hanging until here. So I wanna draw my path basically. And that gets really tricky if you just use the arc tool to uh, draw something like this, just cause it can be kind of hard to get this to go straight up and down. Um, you, you can kind of do it and kind of take your best guess, but things kind of like jump around and it's not really my favorite. So usually what I do instead is I'll just find the point that I want these lights to hang off of. So let's say for example, that we wanted them to hang off a point that was like at the bottom of this line. I would just draw a line from here to wherever that point's gonna be. Then I would just draw a line straight down somewhere. And then all I would do is I would take this line and I would use the move tool in copy mode to copy this down. And really what I'm doing is I'm just creating a quick face in here that I can inference off of along that path. So meaning that when I use the arc tool to draw my path now, I'm just gonna tap the A key to activate the arc tool and I'm just gonna draw this along this face. So this gives me kind of a hanging, um, this gives me kind of a hanging string effect. And then I'm just gonna erase out all this extra stuff that I created, and that's gonna leave me with my path right here that I can now, whoops, that I can now use this to copy my lights along. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring in a model from the 3D warehouse in order to copy along this path. And so in this case, I'm gonna use this Vintage Lamp 2 by Martha Pinello. I do want to draw attention to the fact that down below it says the original model is by M. Dorothy, but I can't find a user named M. Dorothy in the actual 3D warehouse. So um, I just want to make sure I give credit to the person that actually created this. I don't know what's going on with this. There's a lot of that going on in the 3D warehouse and I kind of wish that it wouldn't happen, um, but I'm still gonna bring this into my model just so we can use it as an example. Um, but just be aware this original model may have come from a different user than from this one. Um, so what I'm gonna do in this case though is I'm just gonna click the button for download and I'm gonna download this lamp into my model. And so when I bring that in, what that's gonna do is that's gonna drop this lamp 
right here. And the first thing you may notice about this is this probably hangs down a little more than it needs to. So there's a couple different things you could do about that. The first is you could kind of remodel all of this if you wanted to. So you could come in here and remodel this string and then the lamp that's coming down off of this and all of that. Um, for what I'm doing here, since I'm more giving like a visual indicator of what the lights are gonna look like, I'm just gonna select this piece of it and I'm gonna use the scale tool in order to shrink it down. So that is gonna give you a little bit of distortion on that shape, but as far as I'm concerned, when I zoom out, you can't really tell the difference. So I think that's gonna work okay. And so what I want to do is I want to use the extension path copy, which I will link to in the notes down below. Use path copy to copy this lamp along this arc or this line. And so the way that that's going to work is you're just going to select your line and then you're going to go up to extensions and you're going to find path copy. And what it's going to ask for is it's going to ask for you to select the group or component to copy. So we're going to go ahead and click on this. And so the first thing you're going to notice when you bring this in is that these are in the wrong spot. And the reason they're in the wrong spot is because the component axes are in the wrong place. And what that means is this extension places these objects based on the point inside the component where the axes intersect and each component inside of SketchUp has its own set of axes and so what we need to do is we need to redraw this uh, or we need to redraw the axis intersection point so that it's on the top of this wire so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to undo my path copy in here um, so that we can get this sorted out and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click inside this component and I'm just going to go up to tools axes and I'm going to draw a new axis or a new component axis on top of this line. And I'm just going to make sure it's centered on top of this. Um, I like to make sure that the blue axis is pointing up as well. But then when I double click outside of this, it's going to ask if I want to update the component axes to match your modified sketch axes. And in this case, we're going to say yes. And so what that means is now if I double click in here, you can see how the component axes are at the top of this line as opposed to down in the corner. So now we're going to run path copy again. So we're just going to select this line. We're going to go to extensions, path copy, then we're going to click on this light. And when we click on this light, you're going to notice that this is going to bring these lights in. And your spacing may look a little different than mine. And even though it doesn't show up right here, you can type in a new spacing as long as you haven't clicked on anything else once you've done this. So like for example, I could type in something like 24 and hit the enter key and this would space these by 24 inches or every 24 inches as opposed to every 36 inches. Um, or you could do like 12 or you can really type in whatever value you want. I really feel like the 36 inch spacing along here actually looks pretty good. So I think we're gonna kind of leave that as is. The only other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete out this extra one that's created right here because I don't really feel like we need that. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a copy of this post that we created over here I'm gonna move it along the red axis and center it along this point, and then I'm just gonna do the same thing, where um, I'm gonna draw a little line down, just so I have a point to come off of here. Then I'm gonna draw an edge that lines up with the end of this point. We're just gonna draw our edge down, and we're just gonna make a copy of this using the Move Tool in Copy Mode. And then I'll just draw a line up, and we'll just create our hanging arc again, and then we'll erase out our extra. And so now that this is in here, and now that our component axes are set up properly, we're just gonna drop this right in using path copy. So select your line, extensions, path copy, click on your object, your spacing should still be set at that same 36 inches. If not, you can type in 36, then we'll just erase out these extra pieces right here, and there you go. So it's really easy to bring in copies like this one and put them along this string light inside of SketchUp using Path Copy.
So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Have you been using path copy for things like this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you liked this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.